Welcome to an enlightening podcast from IslamPodcasts.com. We encourage our listeners to please comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please remind your family and friends to also visit IslamPodcasts.com for engaging discussions on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran, Tafsir, Sira, and much more. Musa السلام, is mentioned 124 times in the Quran. The story of Musa is covered in more details than any other prophet in the Quran. It is imperative for Muslims to learn the lessons from the epic story of Musa for the struggles that we face today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The story of Musa السلام, has so many lessons, it is amazing, just like the miracles he was given. The parallels with today's time are uncanny. The political tyranny, challenging a political superpower headed by a tyrant, the propaganda, the political violence, the oppression and the discrimination of an immigrant community. Egypt was hugely wealthy, powerful and more advanced than any civilization at the time. Fir'aun was an absolute dictator. He oppressed and discriminated against Bani Israel, the dependents of Yaqub and his 12 sons. They had lived in Egypt for many generations. They numbered almost 600,000, yet they were still viewed as foreigners and outsiders, inferior to Egyptians and not to be trusted. A policy of divide and rule was used to keep Egyptian society divided. And yes, we can see all these descriptions applicable today. This story is narrated in detail in the Quran due to its importance and relevance to the final Ummah so that we can take heed and, and take hope from this story. Over the next few short presentations, I am going to pick out some events and incidents from the life of Musa salam and draw some lessons. We begin with the birth of Musa salam. ونريد أن نمن على الذين استضعفوا في الأرض ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم الوارثين. Not only that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show Fir'aun how futile his opposition was to Allah's plan. Fir'aun had a dream, a very vivid dream. Maybe he knew about the dream a previous Egyptian king had, which Yusuf had translated and saved his land from famine. He got his experts to translate the dream of a fire that came from Jerusalem and burnt all the houses in Egypt, except the houses of Banu Israel. So Fir'aun was told, a boy will be born to them and the Egyptians will perish. So Fir'aun issued a decree to slay every boy child born to Bani Israel. But then, who would work? Who would be the slaves? Who would be the servants? So Fir'aun changed his order to say all boys in every alternative year would be killed. Harun was born in a year. Boys were permitted to live, but Musa, his brother, was to be born in a year all babies were to be killed. Now imagine the fear and dread of Musa mother. She hid the pregnancy from the government informers that were operating in their community to identify pregnant women. However, when she gave birth, she could no longer hide the baby. It was only a matter of time the baby would be discovered. Her fear and concern are difficult to imagine. وأوحينا إلى أم موسى أن أرضعي فإذا خفت عليه فألقيه في اليم ولا تخافي ولا تحزني إن را But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired her. He told her, nurse him. Then when you fear for him, cast him into the river. And do not fear nor grieve. We will give him to you. 
and make him one of the messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was asking. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was asking was completely against the nature of a mother. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise trumps all human logic and reason. Musa alayhi salam's sister followed the basket as it went along the river Nile only to see it go to the very place they were trying to save it from. And that was the palace of Fir'aun. In the morning of the next day, the mother of Musa alayhi salam was heartbroken and was on the verge of disclosing the identity of the baby that had gone to the palace. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthened her just a little while longer. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the love of the baby in the heart of Lady Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun. And she pleaded with Fir'aun to keep the baby. And to that he agreed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes Fir'aun complicit in his own downfall to add to his humiliation. The baby was hungry and it wouldn't take feed from any woman. Now Musa's sister had followed the basket to the palace and suggested to Lady Asiya that she knew of a woman who may be able to feed the baby. So in desperation, they went to this house. So when they arrived to the house, the baby immediately took feed from its mother. Lady Asiya agreed to bring the baby daily to the house under royal guard and pay Musa's mother for feeding the baby. So now, not only has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled his promise to the mother of Musa immediately, he has provided the best protection for the baby and has brought rizq for the whole family. So let's reflect on this first part of the story. Regardless of how bleak the reality may seem, and regardless how badly the odds are stacked against you, regardless of how powerful your opponent may seem, the first lesson in the epic story of Musa salam is, if you trust in the promise of Allah, Allah will of surety grant you a way out. The promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is no match for any superpower. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Podcasts on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran tafsir, and sirah are available at islampodcasts.com as well as on iTunes. Rate, review, and comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please subscribe, share, and tell a friend about islampodcasts.com.